In the early to mid 2000s, action sports or extreme sports such as skateboarding, freestyle BMX, snowboarding, surfing, wakeboarding, and motocross hit their all time peak in terms of mainstream popularity. And while online video platforms such as YouTube and Vimeo were just around the corner, consuming action sports content during this time, specifically in video form, wasn't very easy. The Fox Sports Media Group took notice of this and jumped at the opportunity to start a new TV channel, which focused exclusively on the world of action sports, with the name Fuel TV. But less than a decade after its debut, the network experienced drastic programming changes and eventually went through a complete relaunch. We'll be discussing the rise and fall of Fuel TV on today's episode of Looking Back. Before we begin the video, I want to make it clear that I'll be discussing Fuel TV from the perspective of the North American viewing audience, specifically in the United States. Those of you who live in other parts of the world were probably scratching your heads in confusion when you saw the title of this video, because Fuel TV might not have been taken off the air in your country. I'm literally enjoying tea and crumpets while watching Fuel TV right now, you bloody wanker. But we'll dive a bit further into that later in the video. When I said that the early to mid 2000s was the time in which action sports hit their peak mainstream popularity, I meant it. My YouTube analytics data tells me that I don't really have a lot of younger viewers, but I'll try to explain to all 9 or 10 of you what the world was like in those days. Basically, you couldn't go through everyday life without seeing an action sports athlete or some kind of reference to an extreme sport. Whether it was cartoons like Rocket Power or American Dragon Jake Long, movies like Lords of Dogtown, Motocross, Grind, and Zolar, the extreme sports movie featuring everyone's favorite alien. Check out my son. Zolar! Hola! Toys such as Tech Deck Finger Skateboards, Tech Deck Dudes, which were literally thumbs that rode on skateboards, Flick Tricks Finger BMX and Finger Dirt Bikes, Happy Meal toys based on Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Huck Jam. There were even commercials in which the product being advertised had nothing to do with extreme sports that featured surfboards, BMX bikes, and Ritz Bits crackers pretending to skateboard on a half pipe made out of pizza. And don't forget about the countless extreme sports video games that were coming out at the time. Activision was responsible for publishing a majority of those games, but those titles only scratched the surface of the action sports subgenre in gaming. Despite all of that, the availability of action sports content broadcast on television was ridiculously scarce. In the 2000s, I was what you would call a casual skater. So in other words, I was never any good. And that was really the only extreme sport that I participated in, if you consider riding down the street or ollieing off a curb extreme. So I really can't speak for fans of other action sports, but based on the research I've done for this video, it looks like we were all kind of in the same boat when it came to a lack of televised content. Fans of skateboarding, motocross, freestyle BMX, snowboarding, wakeboarding, and surfing had the summer and winter X Games to look forward to on an annual basis, along with the now defunct Gravity Games. And remember, YouTube and Instagram weren't around yet, so if I wanted to watch some actual skateboarding footage, you know, real skateboarding videos, not just a commercial with a kid skateboarding down the street holding a tube of Go-Gurt, my only options were hitting up the local skate shop to buy skate videos on DVD, which wasn't really feasible on an allowance of $5 per week. Or I could try my luck with file sharing services such as LimeWire or Kazaa, which usually resulted in dozens of computer viruses. Or you would download what you thought was going to be an awesome skateboarding video, only to be tricked into downloading a weird clip involving a girl and a donkey. I don't want to see something like that. Why would you want to see something like that? Because it's fucked up. But action sports fans didn't need to put up with this much longer, as a solution to this lack of video content was right around the corner. On April 14, 2003, the Fox Corporation announced that Fuel TV would be launching on July 1st of that year. Fuel TV founder and senior vice president, CJ Oliveris, stated that the channel would tempt young male viewers aged 12 to 25 with extreme sports like snowboarding and wakeboarding, which are only sporadically offered on TV. He went on to explain that the network's name personifies the power, the passion, and the depth of these sports and the influence they play in youth culture. CJ was no stranger to the world of action sports, as he previously worked on the action sports series Blue Torch TV, which aired on the Fox Sports Network. It also acted as a senior consultant for the Netherlands-based action sports network 
Extreme Sports Channel, whose founder played an important part in the development of Fuel TV, as he was the individual who pitched the overall concept of Fuel TV to the senior VP and general manager of Fox Sports International, David Sternberg, using the Extreme Sports Channel as sort of a blueprint to follow during the development of Fuel TV. Also, it turns out that the name Fuel TV wasn't completely original. There was a weekly program called Fuel TV based out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, which aired during the Saturday night paid programming slot on the local WB affiliate station, WB53, between the years of 2001 and 2003. It seems like this Fuel TV show did display some action sports. The program mostly featured musical acts, ranging from local unsigned artists to nationally known bands, such as the Misfits, Everclear, Nickelback, The Chattanooga-based Fuel TV program came to an end when Fox negotiated a buyout of the concept and trademark for the program in 2003. With all of the pieces of this new channel in place, the Fuel TV network finally debuted on July 1st of 2003. And man, let me tell you, when this channel hit the scene, it actually wasn't that popular. It didn't help that the network seems to have only launched on DirecTV. It did eventually expand into the cable TV market, but at the time, DirecTV had about 11 to 12 million subscribers in the United States, which may sound like a lot, but at that same time, there were over 66 million cable subscribers in the US. Despite the channel's lackluster debut in terms of viewership numbers, the network's general look and programming were spot on. Fuel TV's visual style was very unique in its time, and despite the fact that the network's parent company was Fox Sports, an absolute conglomerate in the television industry, Fuel TV didn't have that corporate stink to it. You could definitely tell that the individuals working behind the scenes at this network respected action sports as a whole. They weren't a bunch of pencil pushing, suit wearing, desk jockeys who didn't know the first thing about extreme sports. But as word of mouth spread, Fuel TV gained more notoriety and expanded its library of original programming throughout the years, providing fans of every action sport with so many great television programs. Motocross fans had shows like M80, The Great Ride Open, Thrillbillies, and Bubba's World. Snowboarders could look forward to shows like The Standard Snowboard Show, The Adventures of Danny and Dingo, and Snowboard Diaries. Surfers had Longboard TV, On Surfari, Drive Through New Zealand, and Drive Through Australia. The show Pull was the very first program on TV solely for fans of wakeboarding, and Props was dedicated to the world of freestyle BMX. But the best thing about Fuel TV was its ability to showcase various action sports on the same series, with shows like The Daily Habit, Camp Woodward, New Pollution, Built to Shred, and First Hand, which went on to be one of the most successful and longest running series that Fuel TV ever produced, with an impressive 12 season run. Like I said, skateboarding was my favorite action sport, but even I found myself sitting down to watch full episodes of First Hand that didn't focus on skaters, because the episodes were just so well made. Speaking of skateboarding, Fuel TV was an absolute paradise for skaters. I'll never forget some of the best days during summer vacations in middle school. Waking up and watching the Captain and Casey show, skating down to my local Cumberland Farms for a bag of combos and a slushy, or chill zone, and heading home to watch skate maps. Another show that had a huge impact on me was Drive Notes from the Wilderness with Mike Vallely. And yes, that's how you pronounce it. I wouldn't dare say Mike V's name incorrectly. You know what happens when you make that mistake. And I proceeded to punch each of them in the head. Drive Notes from the Wilderness was a spin off series of a documentary that Mike starred in called Drive My Life in Skateboarding, both of which involve Mike Vallely taking a cross country road trip, stopping at different skate spots, and interacting with local skaters and pro skaters alike. If you've never seen Mike V in anything outside of Viva La Bam, you owe it to yourself to watch this series. He's an incredible storyteller. Although Fuel TV had a strong foothold in the action sports market, the world of entertainment, specifically the way in which people consumed and discovered new media, changed drastically in the later stages of the 2000s. The arrival of websites like YouTube, Vimeo, and Dailymotion made it easier than ever for athletes of all skill levels to share footage in an instant. During that same time period, small affordable camcorders were being introduced into the market that offered 720p recording capabilities on a budget, with the Flip Mino being the most popular model at that time, along with action cameras like the GoPro, which completely changed the world of action sports and the ways that they could be recorded on video. As a society, I think it's safe to say 
that we've gotten used to instant gratification. The idea of just typing skateboarding clips into Instagram or YouTube and being given hundreds of thousands of results in seconds isn't a big deal to us in modern times. But towards the end of the decade in the 2000s, it was an absolutely mind-blowing concept. And while Fuel TV offered a far superior production value than most internet content, easy access was very appealing to action sports fans, undoubtedly causing a dip in viewership for the network. But in 2011, Fuel TV's parent company, Fox Sports, signed a deal that essentially spelled the end of the network's action sports programming lineup. Center. I'm Joe Rogan and I'm very excited that you're able to join us today for this historic moment for Fox Sports and the UFC. To kick things off, I'd like to introduce the, the distinguished executives Smoke weed every day. who we have available to make today's historic announcement and answer your questions. In August of 2011, a multi-year partnership was announced between the Fox Sports Media Group and the Mixed Martial Arts Organization Ultimate Fighting Championship aka the UFC. Essentially, Fox's various sports networks were granted exclusive rights to broadcast live events held by the UFC, along with original UFC branded programming. During that time, Fox owned a number of regional sports networks, along with the network Speed, and obviously Fuel TV. From what I can tell, they initially planned on broadcasting most of their UFC content on the FX network, which was sort of a weird decision, because that network is mostly known for its original programming and airing blockbuster movies. But apparently they planned to air additional events and programs on Fuel TV, which wasn't surprising, as they had just debuted the comedic fighting show hosted by Jason Ellis, Ellis Mania, which was a pretty big departure from the usual action sports programming that Fuel TV offered. By December of 2011, just four months after the partnership between Fox Sports and UFC was announced, an article was published via MMA Weekly in which Dana White, president of the UFC, reported that Fuel TV had already seen an 11% growth in its subscriber base because of the partnership. In the same article, George Greenberg, Fuel TV's executive vice president and general manager, was quoted as saying, we, Fuel TV, will market the living hell out of the UFC. And they did just that. and the UFC are teaming up and something big's going down. The wait is finally over. Bringing you more UFC coverage than any other network. And it all starts with an unprecedented 24 hours of UFC. Wow! In 2012, not only did the programming lineup on Fuel TV change, but the network would see a full rebranding, ditching the sharp-edged, vibrant logo that the network had used since its inception. Instead, going for a tougher look, that matched its new UFC-centric programming lineup. Action sports content was still shown on the network during this time, but that would quickly change. By the end of 2012, Fuel TV was essentially turned into the UFC channel, and for good reason. In January of 2013, Fox Sports Media Group put out a press release stating that Fuel TV delivered its 12th straight month of audience increases and experienced its most watched day in network history on April 14th of 2012 as a result of UFC on Fuel TV 2. As the UFC continued to dominate in the ratings, Fox Sports Group made the decision to rebrand both Fuel TV and their racing-centric network, Speed. Speed relaunched as Fox Sports 1, which was announced by Fox on March 5, 2013, for a relaunch on August 17. And even though the writing was on the wall, action sports fans, who were still tuning into Fuel TV in 2013, weren't giving much of a warning. In fact, they were only given a week's notice that Fuel TV would be relaunching as Fox Sports 2. Fuel TV might have gone dark in the United States, but action sports fans in other parts of the world were a bit more fortunate, as Fuel TV remained on the air for many countries, over 50 of them, in fact. Fuel TV EMEA, which stands for Europe, Middle East, Asia, has operated out of Lisbon, Portugal since 2008, and jumped at the opportunity to purchase the Fuel TV branding from Fox in 2014, and have been operating Fuel TV internationally ever since. But don't worry. If you're a resident of the United States or Canada, Fuel TV is back. Well, sort of. The Fuel TV Plus app launched on September 1st of 2020 and has a massive selection of original content, both new and old. Like most streaming apps, there is a fee involved. $4.99 a month or $49.99 if you prepay for a year subscription. 
As of right now, they do offer a seven day free trial if you wanna give it a test run. The Fuel TV website is relatively easy to navigate, but I prefer the Roku app. You can also access Fuel TV on a number of different devices. It's a little bit weird that they don't have an Android app yet as of April 2021, but that might be on the way. I'm also a little bit disappointed that the Captain and Casey show, Skate Maps, American Misfits, and Drive aren't on here, but hopefully they'll expand their library with more classic series from the beginnings of Fuel TV in the future.